What's going on, people? How about we take care of Varric's brother once and for all? This house looks abandoned. I don't get it. My sources saw people making deliveries here just a week ago. This looks like it's been empty for months. You think he put the cobwebs up to discourage tax collectors? Well, you're thinking it's a trap. <laughs> Great. It's been ages since my brother tried to kill me. Okay, so cue the Clint Eastwood whistles and the rattlesnakes. It's a high noon showdown. <laughs> Notice the squints. This is this is awesome. So that's how you greet your brother, is it, Bartrand? Fine. Say hello, Bianca. All right, now, okay, we're in the mansion, right? And he may not be wearing a Tony Montana suit, but that was just pure Scarface right there. Say hello to my little friend, <laughs> right? Anyway, before actually getting around to telling the truth to uh, Cassandra, every once in a while, Derek might be prone to some uh, tall tales. Yeah, stretching the truth just a bit. It perhaps it didn't go down exactly like this right here, but... Uh, Basically, it's the same thing as, as the demo or the tutorial section where you start out invincible and uh, Bethany has a huge chest and uh, that's pretty much the center of Barrett's tail. Of course, Cassandra can see right through his, his BS and uh, will demand the truth, but for the time being, we get this uh, epic display of crossbow skills right here. Uh, nothing else, this was just fun. That explosive shot is pretty convenient, actually. Too bad it's friendly fire. Nug-humping bastard! Oh, Varric! Please forgive me, my brother. I was just jealous of you. How could I ever compete with you for mother's love? <laughs> You're strong and handsome, and so very smart. Bullshit. <laughs> Why lie now about this? What have you to gain? What do you want from me? I broke in, I found my brother, and it was awkward. Family business. No. I think there's more to it. <sighs> Fine. You want the gory details? I'll give you the gory details. Alright, so now we get to see what actually really happened. Not too far different from that. Run in and just kill a whole bunch of mercenaries on our way to get to Bartram. But uh, all that pleading for uh, Varric to understand that he was just jealous of mother's love. Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe that was a little far-fetched. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing in there, you know, little garnish on his tail. Yeah. Just like the Fenris mission, all these mansion missions, they can be uh, pretty nasty, actually. What did my brother do? Find it. Uh, Fine, later on the Barcher might have just better, been better served just killing us outright down there to Deep Roads. That's how he wanted to do it. Probably could have. Time, he's he's no small skilled assassin, actually. He hits pretty hard. But anyway, like like the other areas, we essentially have to work through all these outside rooms to eventually get there. Um, the thing about this is there's lots of little mobs of mercenaries 
hidden in these little side rooms and sometimes if you if you alert them all at once you can get mobbed by like literally 25 or 30 of these guys i mean it's it's kind of ridiculous actually thankfully there's not too many archers there's one spot where there's a few of them but uh, other than that it's not not too bad i guess you could say I have a few of these commanders here. Plenty of XP to be had here, though. Plenty of XP. And that's a good thing. Go ahead and come to me. Yeah, there's there's some archers there. I can't take too many hits point blank from these guys. I really can't. So they're um, they're basically the first in the threat order, order of importance. Notice Aveline keeps saying this is wearing on me. She's essentially out of stamina. Her, all of her stamina is reserved for her sustains, and that's why I was saying um, last couple videos I'd like to start stacking her with some stamina gear. Health is an issue, um, but as she becomes tankier, she can afford to stack a little bit more along the lines of stamina, maybe stamina regen. Regen doesn't matter, though, if she doesn't have enough stamina left over to perform a basic uh, attack. Good thing though is if her stamina is regenerating really fast and whatever she has left in reserve is relatively small, then she gets that back quick. And so, you know, if I ask her to do one or two things like, you know, rally, um, maybe even uh, an attack like assault or something, you know, give her a little little bit of offense later on. Offense is really kind of secondary, um, other than her setting up my mages for combos, the ability uh, with with her attacks to, you know, stun or, uh, what was it, stagger enemies and stuff. You know, things like that. I mean, I'll be keeping my eye out for, for stamina stuff. I could actually go in and figure out just how much um, keeping uh, immovable and... Battle synergy and you know all that stuff. See how much it's actually not basically costing her to keep all that active. Then look at what she has left over and see what she's going to need. Because I think some of those, if not all of those, are percentage sustains. Like some may cost a certain amount of mana. Of course, then again, may all they all may just cost a, a percentage and whatever. So if she has a hundred uh, stamina, for example, a mana. If she has a hundred stamina and her sustains are costing her say a total of 85 percent or 85 total stamina whatever the case may be that means she has 15 left over well if a skill costs 20 she's not gonna have that if it's percentage though i'm gonna have to raise it by more than five um to cover that because her sustains are taking up a percentage not an actual set quantity Fifty percent of two hundred isn't fifty; it's a hundred. So you know, you have to look at it that way. So we may have to buffer stamina quite a bit. Now, ah, I don't remember there being quite this many archers. Damn. Okay, that's pretty nasty, actually. This is a little bit more like the uh, the guard pretenders in the night lies. Quite a few of these guys. I don't think they keep respawning out of the ceiling, though. That's a good thing. See if I can kill this archer before he kills me. Funny, this guy's back here in the corner shooting through the wall, basically. There we go. Seven hundred, nice. 
can't knock that. I don't know what we get for finishing this. Pro we'll probably level up or be real close once we're done with this. We're getting there. At some point we need to do a uh, go in and cover character builds for anyone that's interested in that. If anyone thinks that this is a pretty uh, sexy damage dealing rogue build overall. If the team is, is functioning well, then I will uh, share with you guys, you know, how I put my stuff together. I think tactics are just as important as the build. Although there are some uh, key elements in place with the build itself. This is one of those where you can start doing decent damage early, but it really comes into its own later. Um, kind of like the two-handed warrior. It develops a little slower, but um, well, it's a lot of fun. Actually, the sword and shield warrior um, might be even a little bit more effective. Might develop a little faster and give you a little more tankiness. You know, a little more survivability. But, uh, I mean, you just look so cool with that two big old two-handed, you know, friggin' axe or sword or whatever. I mean, you know, fashion age. <laughs> you gotta look cool while you're killing things type of thing. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and get this commander out of here right now. Or not. Oh, wow. Wow, he just healed most of his health. See, those archers up there, they're not making things look easy. See, he's buffing. He's, uh, their, their health is regenerating almost as fast as you as you can kill them. I, that's crazy. Now, there'll be a point. See where I'm obscure right here? There'll be a point later where, um, as long as I have the obscure effect, like, every hit is a critical type of thing. And it might actually be handy to have um, Varric around for that. In fact, at the very end of the game, I just might have Varric around for that. Specifically for that. Hopefully Aveline will be able to handle up well enough to where we can run with a one mage system. Don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to not roll with Meryl, though, too, because she just, she's just a spell-slinging battery. Seriously. See what a difference haste makes in your in your damage output. You, buddy. Damn. Varric? Is that you? Praise the ancestors. Hold up. I know this man. He's Bartran Stewart. Hugin, what happened here? Varric, your brother. That statue he brought out of the deep roads. Bartran said it sang to him even after he sold it. I've been hiding in here, but the guards. They're like crazed animals. I didn't dare go past them. Everyone in this house has gone mad. What did he do to the guard to turn them to this? He's been forcing them to eat lyrium. Some of the servants, he cut pieces off them while they were still alive. He says he's trying to help them hear the song. Please stop him. Bartran's not exactly a nice guy, but this doesn't sound like my brother. You said he sold the statue. To who? I don't know. It's why we came back to Kirkwall. He was already starting to rant about the sodding idol and his singing. On his better days, he hated the thing. Wanted to get rid of it. But the minute it was gone, he got worse. I haven't seen anyone alive in here except for guards. What happened to the rest of the staff? I don't know what Bartran did to them. By the ancestors. The sound's coming from his study. They're dead by now. I hope. What do you mean you hope they're dead? Just whoever... 
Whatever you find in that room, Varric, give them a merciful death. I assume you mean he's crazy, not just very upset. He's hearing things, seeing things, talking to someone who's not there. That's when he's feeling good. Bartran took the servants and locked himself inside the study. No one's come out for days. And those sodding lunatics just keep prowling the halls. Then we go in after him. Come on, Hawk. Let's finish this. Okay, now, um, the Red Lyrium is singing to him, and it's kind of reminiscent of all oh, the effect that the Lyrium has on the Wardens, you know, in their calling thing, giving them a false sense of calling to where they essentially go to kill themselves, basically. Um, kind of like Lemmings, the whole Lemming mentality, you know, where they essentially in a group just go run off a cliff, you know. All for one, one for all type thing. Um that he can persuade or drive you know these groups of mercenaries here crazy um whether it's him or the red lyrium or whatever i, I don't know also we'll see bartran is, is more of a you know it's a rogue assassin thing that he's doing kind of reminiscent of the uh the effect the red lyrium seems to have on the like stalkers or lurkers or shadows or whatever the assassins are in uh, inquisition also much more powerful I mean, he hits hard, hard, like one-shotting everybody as as a backstabber type thing. So it's like, hmm. I mean, those just may be his natural skills or something, but uh, I don't know. Um, I know, all right, with the mage, you know, a corrupt mage might be um, influenced by blood magic. Now, I know blood magic in and of itself is, is quote-unquote harmless, although it's one of the few magics that requires sacrifice. Uh, to perform either your own or somebody else's type of thing okay so there is there is a difference there you know as much as maybe soulless and the rest of them would you know don't want to admit there is a difference i mean it's not essentially harmless so to speak because the uh uh the cost to perform it is is different than you know maybe just a little lyrium or just some natural born magic abilities you actually have to make a sacrifice right, it's not really blood magic until somebody dies like my hawk would say type of thing but the uh and I think we're fixing to spawn. What's his face right here? Yeah, good, good point to save. Just see, he's a, he's a pretty stout assassin. Sing a song for me, the Lyrium singing to him. Interesting, but um, okay. Point I was gonna make is a you know a blood mage, all right. And then you have reavers, which is basically a blood warrior, and then you have assassins, which is a blood rogue. Um, and I only say that, um, I use this comparison, is a blood mage, the demon takes up residency in the mage. Alright, and uses that mage as essentially a vessel. It resides in the mage. Okay, with a reaver, uh, according to Breaker Thram, who teaches you to be a reaver in Inquisition, she, uh, she gives you a, a little, uh, little bit of insight. She says the demon finds no purchase in you because you're not a mage, right? So the demon works through you, and you actually see the demon paws or the dragon paws reaching through the reaver when you attack with dragon rage. Okay, and so um, it's it's kind of a similar principle, but the demon works through you differently. And with an assassin, the demon essentially pulls or takes through the assassin. Um, you gain um, massive abilities um, from your stealth skill, which is, I guess, essentially the magic power that the demon might give you as an assassin. Um, and then, as a result, you take life. You you draw life like that. Interesting comparison there. Help me find it again. You were always a good one. Help you, Bartrand. You left me to die. You left all your men to die. And for what? Some trinket? Look at yourself. Look at what you've done to the men and women who served you. Where's your nobility, brother? Where's your dwarven honor? This doesn't feel natural. If he wasn't a dwarf, I'd think a demon did this. 
His mind has been poisoned by something powerful. That's all I can do. It won't last, I'm sorry. Varric? I'm here. Varric? What have I done? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Make it stop, little brother. Don't let me... Don't let House Tetris fall like this. I know. I don't deserve it. But please, Varric, don't leave me like this. Make it stop. Enough with the speeches. I'll get you to a healer, and you'll be fine. Seriously? No, there's no healer for that. I'm going to skin him alive, and then... Poof. Best buddies? I can't do it, Hawk. I thought I could. I thought he'd be gloating. Lying on a bed of gold and commissioning painters to memorialize the instant he sealed us into the deep roads. But look at him. Whatever that idol was, it did worse to him than I ever could. You heard, Anders. He's possessed. As long as he lives, he's a threat to everyone around him. Goodbye, brother. Come on. I don't want to look at this place anymore. Sad case here is that he's broken, you know? Um, once possessed, once mind controlled. Um, even if you could fix him temporarily, like Anders says, all, all he could do is, you know, it just wouldn't, wasn't going to last. And I believe Anders on that point. Um, you know, not liking it doesn't make it not true. In other words, if he's broken, he's broken. If he can't be fixed or saved, well, okay. But he's a danger to others, obviously. I mean, look at this here. And he's a, essentially a conduit for this kind of influence here that can drive others mad just by being around him, essentially. Um, makes you kind of wonder how the whole warden thing spread amongst all the rest of the wardens. Something, Something along these lines? I should thank you for your help with my brother. He was a jackass, and he tried to kill us, but... That was still the hardest thing I've ever done. I don't know. Maybe I could have found help for him. He was obviously suffering. You spared him a lot of misery. I hope you're right. I don't know if surface dwarves go back to the stone or hang around singing hymns with Andraste or what. I just hope wherever he is now, Bartrand stays out of trouble. Any idea what really went on with him in that statue? Well, the thing must be cursed. I don't know if it's magic or demons or the bile of the ancestors, but I think curse about covers it. If we're lucky, Whoever he sold it to had the damn thing melted down for scrap. You think he'll badmouth us to the Maker? Haunt our houses? <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. He always was the vindictive type. Anyway, thank you. I'll keep looking into who bought that blighted statue. At the very least, they need to be warned about what happened. Yeah, it's a shame we couldn't do more for him, but, uh, the future lives that we put at risk by allowing him to, uh, stay around, right? Assuming, you know, you can't watch him 24-7, um, that this could, you know, rear its ugly head later on with this guy. The future lives you, you put at risk, um, that's not, that's not worth the risk. In other words, you know, save one person to save many more on down the line, because this guy's capable of terrible things. Whether he's in control of his own faculties or not is a kind of irrelevant. He's broken, you know? Um, sorry. If something's fixable, yeah, you fix it. If something's not fixable, um, holding on to it at the risk of others' safety and well-being, it's not fair to everyone else. It's, it's just not. You're telling everyone else your lives are worthless and this person's one life is worth more than yours. When they haven't done anything and this man's already committed atrocities. Like I say, whether he was in control of his own faculties or not, you know, oh well. I mean, that, that still doesn't, uh, set aside the point that he's capable of this stuff. That he's essentially a tool for some power which we don't quite understand, we just see the effects. And we don't need that happening anymore.
and it may sound harsh, but um, it's even more harsh, like I say, to put the, innoc the future innocents at risk who would die at his hand. Because of his being just batshit crazy, right? Anyway, Ver Verick's, Verick's, Verick's pretty stout, man. He'll get over it. There's this tale making the rounds. They're saying you single-handedly fought off a pirate invasion at midnight on the sacred ground of the Chantry. Don't the stories mention my stunning good looks? What about my cunning wit? Nope. They skip straight to the part about the lovable dwarf with the gorgeous crossbow and the heart of gold. I try to steer them straight, but you know how stories go. Just don't be surprised if people seem in awe. What compels you to spin these ridiculous tales? I love the sound of my own voice. And I'm a compulsive liar. Honestly, I don't know. It's just something I do. There's power in stories, though. That's all history is. The best tales, the ones that last. Might as well be mine. I find it hard to believe you're spreading these stories without getting something in return. Well, that just shows what you know, Hawk. The stories are their own reward. You really need to see the look on someone's face when I tell them you ripped the arms off an ogre. <laughs> Just once. Wouldn't it make more sense for you to be the main character in these tall tales of yours? There's a recipe to a good hero, Hawk. It's like alchemy. One part down to earth, one part selfless nobility, two parts crazy, and you season liberally with wild falsehoods. You let that percolate through a good audience for a while, and when it's done, you've got your hero. I guess all works. A little reverence wouldn't hurt, though. You're beautiful, deadly, and hang out with fantastic dwarves. It would be a crime if people didn't talk about you. Anyway, I'll quit exaggerating before it goes to your head. What Tell you what, if Varric was in Hollywood... All the bands would be going to him, to uh, bands and actors and what have you, would be going to him to become famous. He'd be the most sought-after agent. <laughs> best promoter. Best promoter in the business. Right there. I wonder if I have anything to turn into this lady here. I think I turned in that last street gang we, we cleaned up. Pretty sure I did. Go ahead and dump off a bunch of this nonsense that we found in Bartram's mansion. I think we have to return there later in Act 3, maybe? Seems like we do. In fact, there's a uh, special rune uh, made from this crazy lyrium stuff. Something like that. Anyway, well, we'll see when we get there. We have a lot to do before then. Get some more main quest stuff done. At some point, go to the uh, go to the DLC, too. I want to go look into the old uh, Corifinus business. See if we can't uh, shed a little light on some new stuff. Wow, that belt is uh, kind of worthless as far as stats go, but damn, it's worth uh, it's worth over one gold all by itself. I'll take that. Notice we're all the way back up to eighty. Uh, if we if we mines our P's and Q's, we could probably get that staff from Meryl, that cold staff. Although I don't know, I think I think she kind of functions with what she's got, but uh, be worth doing, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I might want to save my pennies for some stuff in Act 3. It seems like there's quite a few items that I'll want. Which I'll get gold in Act 3 also. So, I don't know. We'll see. It's not so imperative with the rogue as it is with the warrior. Warrior is really expensive. Especially if you want to equip your other rogues with some stuff like rings and amulets and things that you can only buy. It gets really expensive. I think it's the highest cost class. And mage is probably second, rogue is last. Anyway, alright. Thanks for watching. And we'll get into some more stuff on the next one. If you want to subscribe, click that button up top. If you want to catch the rest of this Let's Play up to this point, click that image there in the middle, and I will catch you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.